you just mentioned there you're with Craig Bellamy after you after you moved from the Northern Eagles to the Storm in yep. around 2000, early 2000, 2001. Um, so you had Craig Bellamy there as coach and then you went to the Seagulls. Um, you had Des, Craig Bellamy and your time at the Raiders, I think was only short time, but were you with Ricky Stewart? No, I was with um, David Ferner. David Ferner. Yeah. Time you had some you had some great coaches that mentored you. Say between Bellamy and and Des, what were some of the things you took from both of them that they did well, and how have you applied that? I guess in, the, in your role at the moment, I'd probably say let's do a, I guess not a comparison, but Craig Bellamy is well. They both they both work tirelessly. Um, the work they do put in is just next level. They're sort of, they're there before everybody. Bellamy would always train before the team would get in. Um, God, those guys, I don't think would get too much sleep, which I understand that's, there's just, he has 20 odd coffees a day. Now I understand why. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they both were, um, I guess they would take it personally if they missed something in prepping for a, a game. Um, so they wouldn't leave any rock unturned, uh, meticulous in their video work, um, but both, and especially Bellamy, um, very big on the basics and the fundamental parts of the game. Catch, pass, um, you know, very simple, well, very simple, but uh, they'll break it right down and he would just be repetitive. And Dez was the same, but they would both do a lot of teamwork under fatigue, obviously game related and that's where I think the skill came into it and everything became sort of triggered to me that's you know the more game related stuff you do between skills and fitness would be it just kind of reinforced that all these skills and the little parts we do the basics under fatigue it just became muscle memory and they both are really big on it um Craig Bellamy was a very serious man um, there was no messing about and he'd definitely let you know in the video room if you did mess up. So there's nowhere to hide. And he didn't treat anybody different, whether you're Cameron Smith, anyone, Billy Slater, anybody or just a new kid playing his first game. Everyone was treated the same. No rules were any different. Um, with Desi, Desi was a little bit more quirky, um, but he would still keep you on your toes. He would, uh, you weren't sure he'd, he'd walk around really grumpy or look grumpy, but then he'd come in and he'd be the first one to crack a joke. So it was just a, they really knew, they, they knew how to get the best, but keep everybody on their toes and understand we had a job to do. Um, and they're both really good at man management and getting the best out of their players and understanding how they, how the group sort of ticked um, and the style of play they wanted, they wanted to play. They knew they had a vision and they stuck to what worked for them. And that's, we all understood what they wanted. And I guess that's how they, they become the best coaches in the game, right? And I guess having Des with a background in, in teaching as well. And, you know, Bellamy, as you said, getting there before all the players arrive for training and doing his own training, um, you know, setting those standards. And did you think if it sort of helped you rise to higher standards, just working with the, these calibre of, caliber of individuals and in 2004 even in a squad where you say you got Billy Slater Cameron Smith and these guys player of the year for the storm in 2004 um how important was it for you in the early stages of your career to be in an environment like this and how this set you up for you know your your playing days with Manly and being captain then and starting to to lead lead the group I think it played a massive role um I think just taking from what their work ethic was and how they instilled that in their players. I think that sort of set us up for, I guess, the things we achieved. And the standard that Melbourne Storm had always set was always high. Um, even, let me go back to Craig Bellman. He earned the respect by, from the players, not just by being the coach, but would always do a time trial at the start of the season. And it would be, a, I think it was a 5K run um, around the, the Botanical Gardens there at Melbourne. Um, that was the very first thing. And our fastest were like guys like Robbie Ross, Matt Guyer, Billy Slater, and some of those guys, which were, they were doing it in ridiculous times, like 
sort of low 14 minute time trials and yeah. who's right next to him bellamy's right there yeah. so you know i was way back i was probably in the 16 17 minute marks at my best so that's where i guess his work ethic and the way he trained he expected if he could do that everybody else is going to be on the same page and so everyone kind of got well, craig and his respect really early um and everybody knows how des des was the same back in his day he who trained um tirelessly and the hours he put in with his game and when he played was everybody knew that his fitness was next level and he standard also having i guess we had some really 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 good trainers as well head of you know, donny sims and also melbourne we had alex corvo who went on to train some of the australian teams and um things like that so those kind of the teams they have around them and assistant coaches i think um done a lot uh and that's that kind of thing taught me that you need to have a really good team around you and a supporting crew and everyone to be on the same page and understand what their coaching role was and that's what i kind of do now i've got i'm fortunate enough to have jamie bureau as one of my assistants and he's been great um and some of those things kind of even his time because he sort of we we lapsed we didn't get to play with each other but he obviously made the 2011 grand final and played with blokes like cherry and some of those things he got to experience i let him come in and mm. you know do his style of coaching and he's really really methodical too in the things he does and he's very diligent in the way he delivers he, he gets his message across really well and i think i'm still working that out as well um and I want to get better at that is just getting your message across really clearly to the guys and make sure they know exactly what you're saying and make it understandable for kids at that age. I'm sure we, we said it, some of the things we do say with first graders, they don't understand it, but you've got to tone it right down for these guys. And um, I think it's still evolving coaching um, and the way they do things these days, um, break things down even more into little groups such as left edge, right edge and middles and halves and yeah it's broken right down so i'm very much watching how first grade do it and trying to learn and pick the good things out of their brains and how they do things to suit my coaching style yeah there are those stories about des on the sand dunes when he was in his playing days and apparently had these monster quadriceps as well so yeah, yeah. 